welcome to Korea, everyone. G'day guys and thanks for tuning in. It's always an exciting adventure heading to the airport. What's even better? Heading to the international terminal. And this is where I'll begin this video. So let's go. And good morning guys and I'm coming to you from the international terminal of Sydney airport. And I'm off on the first leg of my international trip and I'm off to Korea. So I'm flying today from Sydney to Seoul, Incheon International Airport and this is the beginning of what is a truly epic trip. I'm going to put an overview of my entire route taken on your screen right now. So this is the, this is my trip in, it, in its entirety. Um, I flew to Sydney from Adelaide uh, yesterday on Virgin Australia and uh, yeah I mean I'm not going to cover that domestic flight because I've done domestic flight reviews to death. So I'm pretty excited to get this international flight going. So uh, yeah, let's uh, go into the terminal to check in and see what the experience on the Jetstar 787 is like. Let's do this. If you're new to my channel, my name's Ryan. Born and bred in Singapore, I now call Australia home, and I create heaps of travel and food related content. For instance, on this trip, you see me heading to Seoul, where I'd eat my heart out. I also explore Busan, and I end up in Thailand in both Bangkok and Chiang Mai, some of Asia's top foodie destinations. I then end up in Sri Lanka, and my, what a beautiful country that is. You can follow my journey by hitting the subscribe button and bell icon, so you'll be notified when the next episode of this exciting adventure goes to air. And here's the thanks in advance, because your support is very much appreciated. Flying business class on Jetstar, you get a dedicated line for check-in, which seems very empty today. I was hoping the flight would be empty too, but it would actually turn out to be pretty full. Filled to the brim, not an empty seat inside. Well, in the business cabin, that is. Alright, so all checked in. Um, you see, that's the thing about flying on Jetstar Long Haul on the 787s. Their reliability is a bit, um, it's a bit iffy. So, in the worst case scenario, the flights get gets cancelled altogether and there is a 24 hour delay. Um, but today, uh, this morning when I woke up, I received a text that our 12pm uh, departure has been delayed to 12.40. So um, in the grand scheme of things, it's actually not too bad, at least we're, we're getting going. Uh, so yeah, fingers crossed the delay doesn't um, become bigger and put this whole trip into jeopardy. Yeah, so this is just one thing to take note when you um, get on their long haul services. So let's head to the lounge now. That's our next stop. Let's do this. Security and immigration were pretty intense this morning, seeing how this is peak hour at Sydney International. One thing I do not get is security officers constantly yelling out instructions to passengers in line. On this trip, I'd fly through several major international airports with similar crowd numbers and yet only Aussie airports seem to reveal in this primitive ritual of using grunts and groans to get their point across. This comparison is most fascinating. Not all Jetstar business passengers get lounge access. Only those on the business max bundle will get to walk through these glass doors. Either that or you have Qantas Club membership like I do, or gold status and above. Otherwise, the lounge dragons will point you towards Maccas or Hungry Jacks downstairs. The lounge was definitely crowded that morning. Freshly barista made coffee is always a good start to the visit. One thing I can't complain 
is the international lounges of Qantas always give you a decent fee before any flight. I sat next to a woman moaning into her iPad FaceTime about her cancelled Melbourne to LA flight and Qantas had routed her via Sydney, which would require her to have a 6 hour layover in LA before her flight to Reno. Ah, the first world worries of the jet set. I couldn't listen to another repeat of her story. I swear, she was calling everyone on her contact list and when that ran out, I'm pretty sure she reached out to International SOS. So rather than allow my ears to bleed some more, I chose to leave the lounge for some fresh air. It was time to board anyway, so let's pretend I give a toss about these luxury goods as I wander by in slow-mo. You know what guys, I feel like I'm already in Korea because everyone around me <laughs> is speaking in Korean and we haven't even left Sydney yet. We are still at the airport. We're waiting for the plane. Which is uh, not there yet. Um, yeah, so hopefully the delay doesn't extend any more than this. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's nice to get into the field. <laughs> at 11.35am, here's our aircraft arriving very late from Phuket in Thailand. Soon, there'll be an army of ground staff surrounding this aircraft to get it ready for a flight. There is no rest for this poor girl as she'll turn around immediately back to Sydney after taking us to Incheon. Business passengers were called to board ahead of everyone else, so here I go. Always the first so I can capture an empty cabin. It seems like pushing back at 12.50 our new departure time was now not going to happen. As with all Jetstar long-haul flights, I'm just thankful to get going. Our ride from Sydney to Incheon is with Victor Kilo Hotel, a Boeing 787-8 which first flew in July 2014, making her just over 8.5 years old at the time of writing. Welcome on board this rather slick looking business class cabin of the Jetstar 787. It's configured in a 2 by 3 by 2 over 3 rows giving us a total capacity of 21 seats. On this flight, I'm in seat 1A, the front row. So that means all of your cabin baggage has to go in the overhead compartment because you'll have no underseat storage in front of you. A small price to pay for better than average leg room compared to the seats behind me. Placed on every seat is a plush pillow, an amenity kit and a blanket nicely rolled up. This seat also comes with a footrest which I will find very useful later in flight. Welcome drinks were given out and we had a choice between OJ, water or sparkling wine. The menu was also distributed to the full cabin. The Korean experience had already started as the cabin crew were all fluently multilingual, fluttering very quickly between spoken Korean and English. Very impressive. Orange juice juiceo, gamsa hamida. Hello again. We want you to have a safe and enjoyable flight. So please listen closely while we take you through the safety requirements for our Boeing 787.
the feeling of being airborne for a long-haul flight across vast distances is awesome. After taking off from runway 16 right, we would turn starboard heading north, leaving Australia over Queensland, heading towards Papua New Guinea. The majority of our journey is over the Pacific Ocean before making landfall over southern Japan, flying over Busan before making a beeline for Incheon. Covering a distance of roughly 8,400 kilometers and a flight time of 10 hours 45 minutes. Meanwhile, your in seat controls for TV and lighting panels overhead is located here. On the other side, there are universal power outlets and USB ports to be shared with your seat neighbor. It is more than adequate for the purpose of this flight. After my previous missed opportunity to have a window seat with Jetstar on the 787, I was back with a mission to finger my window shading dial. Although the windows were all tinted dark as soon as we were at cruise, it wasn't locked. So you could still brighten it if you wanted to. The novelty of not having a window shade would soon wear thin, and I would leave the window tint mostly in its darkest mode, because the setting sun was on my side but I could still look outside, so it wasn't all that bad. Perhaps Boeing is on to something after all. There is a pre-meal bar service where the order of your drink choice was taken before takeoff. On this flight, a packet of pretzels accompanied your drink. You can also choose alcoholic bevies if you so fancy, but I'll settle for some Pepsi Max, thank you. The TV is of a decent size, and it falls out of the armrest if you're seated at the bulkhead. In business class, you're able to access the contents free of charge. The amount of content in here is respectable enough for a long haul flight. I always use this opportunity to catch up on movies I've always wanted to watch, or TV series I've been curious about. On this flight today, I zoned in into the new American TV series Kung Fu and binged the entire 10 episodes which filled my time up very easily on this almost 11 hour flight. In between, I had the flight map to entertain me as well. The meal choices were similar to my last Jetstar 787 flight between Melbourne and Singapore. So I went for the salmon option this time, which came with rice and a shiitake and ginger glaze. The glaze turned out to be gravy, which is such a lazy way to glaze over a non-glaze. A salad was thrown together, which was actually not too bad. Following the footsteps of Qantas, we get slices of sourdough, which goes so well with the melted butter. And not forgetting dessert which was once again the same cake I had on the previous flight, an orange almond cake. I've come to know that the meals served on Jetstar long-haul flights, which might surprise some of you, is actually of pretty decent quality. I was quite pleasantly surprised when I last flew them on JQ7 between Melbourne and Singapore. And today, once again, on JQ47 to Incheon, I'm very happy with this meal choice. While the salmon was a little on the dry side, the overall taste was rather palatable. Rice was nicely done, and having it together with the salmon and gravy in its entirety went down very well. Great job, Jetstar! This has got to be one of the most expeditious meal service I've ever experienced. It's now time to extend the footrest and recline the seat. Take it easy and settle in for the long haul. With bar service and lunch completed, we're only just over an hour into the flight. Jeez. Jetstar provides noise cancelling headsets for your perusal. It does the job okay, adequate for you to pass time, but don't go expecting Bang & Olufsen. While I was busy binging on Kung Fu, the crew came by to pass out chockies to those passengers who were still awake. Sorry to those who were unconscious at this stage, no chockies for you. 
we were now just coasting out of Queensland and looking at the full cloud cover beneath. It was the effects of Cyclone Gabrielle, which presently hosts the record for the costliest tropical cyclone in the Southern Hemisphere. It caused much damage to Vanuatu, Norfolk Island, parts of the Queensland coast before heading across the ditch to give Northern New Zealand a good whack before dying off. The Kung Fu binge continued with gusto. One episode after another, I just kept hitting next, next, next and next. I was expecting something cringeworthy, like the original Kung Fu series with David Carradine which ran in the 70s. But the latest reiteration is something else altogether. I was so wrapped up in it, I did not even realize we had hit the 6 hour mark of our flight time. Yep, at the 6 hour mark, we've just left Papua New Guinea behind us and we're now over the Pacific Ocean. This is also where we were given the menu for the second meal. Which is so odd because there's more than 4 hours of the flight left. I understand it's to cater to the rest time of the cabin crew on this sector. I don't have an issue with it because this is a daytime flight. But JQ48 from Incheon to Sydney is a red eye. Does this mean they get woken up 4.5 hours out of Sydney for a second meal? How does this even work? Have you flown on JQ48 before? Let me know in the comments. I went with the chicken quesadilla. No surprise with my preference for spice and heavy flavors. It came accompanied by a mango cheesecake and of course slices of sourdough. I thought the dough was a little too doughy for a quesadilla. But I enjoyed the punchy cheesy chicken filling. This definitely hit the spot for a mid-flight second meal. Did you think those two meals were gonna fill me up? In business class, you're able to order whatever you fancy from the economy class buy on board menu without charge. It's nice that tea is served in proper China. Definitely a fantastic way to conclude the meal service. With the sun now setting over the Pacific Ocean, it's now time to take a look at what the amenity kit holds. For this, we take a blast from the past at my flight on JQ7, where you'll have a blow up neck pillow, a pair of socks, eye shades, earbuds, a pen, and a toothbrush set. It's all nicely packed into this tote bag. Do you want one of these? And yes, you can. You see, I've got a whole of the Jetstar amenity kit and this one is unopened so it is still in a sealed condition. So I, I'm happy to give this away to any one of you who leaves a comment on this video. So you need to let me know what your Instagram handle is, that's number one. Number two, why you want this amenity kit. So leave those in the comments and um, I will announce the winner in March 2023 on my Instagram page. So I only have three conditions. Number one, you must be a subscriber on my YouTube channel. Number two, you have to be a follower on my Instagram page. And number three, you need to be living in Australia. So when I announce the winner, I will mail this to you for free. So go ahead and leave that comment and good luck. So let's head back to the video right now. We're now approaching southern Japan, which means it would be soon before we begin our descent into Incheon International Airport. This is also the perfect time for me to sum up today's journey. I always say, when flying Jetstar long haul, make sure your travel insurance is up to date, because you'll never know when the flight will be cancelled. That being said, the 787 flight dispatch reliability has improved somewhat in the last few months. So there is hope just yet. As for the hard product, let's not kid ourselves. This is only business class by name. But in reality, it's premium economy offering at best, so it's good to set your expectations from the very start to avoid disappointment. It's perfectly acceptable for a daytime flight. 
but I won't be tripping over anyone to do this on a red eye. This flight cost me just over a thousand Australian dollars one way from Sydney to Incheon. It was by far the most affordable business class ticket as the next most expensive was at $1,800 with T-Way Air, a Korean low-cost airline flying the same sector. Jetstar fed me very well and thinking of the Qantas status credits and points I would have gotten, this is really fantastic value. And then there's the crew. There was a mix from the bases of Brisbane, Melbourne, Bangkok and Singapore. Somehow they all got rostered onto JQ47, showing off their fantastic linguistic skills and service mentality. I always say the JQ long haul crew are really cut from a different cloth. They act different, sound different, and they're just a class act in a league of their own. The crew fussing over me in business class were from Melbourne, Brisbane and Singapore. They were all either of Malaysian or Singaporean ethnicity, speaking fluent Korean, English, plus their own mother tongue of different Chinese dialects. Just let that sink in for a bit. A true representation of multiculturalism. And with that, I'm ready to arrive into Korea. So let's enjoy this landing into Incheon International Airport. Welcome to Korea everyone and we are officially in Incheon International Airport here in Seoul. Well not really in Seoul, you're in Incheon. But well we haven't officially been stamped in yet but here we are anyway. Um, yeah, So it's nice to be uh, in Korea for the first time. I mean I am just so excited because I've never been here before. So this is, um, this is going to be a start of a fantastic experience. I can already feel it in my I mean in my body that you know I, I'm so looking forward to this trip well I will talk to you once we've passed immigration because there's a whole lot of things to do um, there is a COVID declaration form yeah I know in this time and in this day and age they are still doing it here in Korea um, but they are very careful about who they're letting in especially if you're coming from China uh, so yeah so this is the cause of this whole um, COVID declaration so um, yeah let's see how the experience is gonna be I mean look at the look at the crowd that's uh, getting off um, the aircraft that's uh, all arrived. I mean look at the crowd. A lot of people are arriving at this time so uh, I don't know how long am I gonna take to clear everything but yeah I'll speak to you on the other side yeah. Okay, anyway, um, I'm here in Seoul right now. This is Joyce. You want to say hi, remove your mask. Now she hi. is <laughs> she's going to be hosting me um, for the entire stay that I'm here in Seoul. Uh, yeah, so for the next few videos uh, going forward here in Seoul, um, you're going to see her face a lot. All right, so anyway, that was a fantastic flight on Jetstar. So thanks for following me on this journey. Um, so I've chucked details on my Instagram on your screen right now. So uh, don't forget to hit me up there. Uh, chuck me a follow and you can see where am I going to in real time okay so in the meantime stay tuned for my adventures here in Korea and don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon and I'll see you for my next video <laughs> I suppose I can say annyeonghaseyo <laughs> and I'll see you around bye <laughs>